the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti just launched. And in this video, I'm going to talk about four different models that I have right here. So the Founders Edition from Nvidia, uh, Palette Dual OC, Gigabyte Eagle OC, as well as the Gaming X3 from MSI. Now, three of these cards are supposed to cost you around $400 or 450 euros, which is the MSRP that Nvidia set for this chip. And one of them is supposed to be a bit more premium model that should cost $75 more, but promises to be the best, the quietest, and with the most RGB of them all. So let's check them out. Let's go. The first model I'm going to talk about is the Founders Edition from NVIDIA. It has an elegant metal design and it is exceptionally well made. Being 24 centimeters long and two slots thick makes it quite compact and it will fit most cases on the market. It doesn't have much in terms of features. Uh, it doesn't have dual BIOS, it doesn't have any RGB, but it does have a fan stop feature that you will basically find on every card these days. It uses the new 16-pin 12-volt high-power cable, but it comes with a simple adapter to a single 8-pin connection instead. And on the back, you get three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 port. Now, in theory, this card costs $400 or 450 euros here in the EU, so it should be one of the cheaper options. However, Founders Edition cards are usually sold out really quickly with very limited restocks, so you usually have to settle for one of the other models. Now, next card is the Palette Dual OC that should cost very close to the $400 MSRP with about $10 or so premium. It looks more like your typical two-slot third-party card. Uh, it's a tiny bit longer and a bit deeper than the Founders Edition, but it's still two slots thick and pretty compatible with most cases on the market, including the ITX ones. It is all black with a couple of lines here and there, but nothing too distracting. So it looks pretty clean overall and it will match most systems easily. It does have a nice looking backplate, which helps the overall design, but it is plastic. So it's more aesthetic than actually useful. That being said, for a sub 160 watt card, I do not think this is a problem. It doesn't have RGB, but it does have a simple white LED line that looks kind of nice in my opinion. Now, if you're feeling particularly creative, uh, they have a base design of the shroud available on their website, so you can design and 3D print your own custom shroud easily, which I think is a pretty cool thing to do. Power comes from a regular 8-pin connector, and it uses the same three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 layout on the back. The next card is the Gigabyte Eagle OC. It has a three fan design, but it is still quite compact because they use smaller 80 millimeter fans. So it's a little bit longer than the FE and the palette, but it's also less deep and it's only two slots thick. So again, it should be quite compatible with most cases out there. Gigabyte is going for a gray color scheme instead, which is still neutral and easy to match. And they avoided too many details that could be distracting. The back plate is plastic as well, but they did add a dual BIOS switch and you can choose between the OC and the Cylon BIOS, which is quite surprising since this is an MSRP model, not a fancier version. It is also powered by a regular 8-pin power cable, but the rear IO is a bit different. So you get two HDMI 2.1 ports instead of one, and you get two display ports instead of three. So depending on your monitor or your TV setup, this might be useful to some of you. And finally, I have the MSI Gaming X Trio. It's obviously the most visually impressive card, especially if you want to convince people that you have a really high-end GPU. It's well over 30 centimeters long, takes up about two and a half slots, and it is quite deep as well, but the 8-pin connection is pretty far in, so you don't need a lot of extra space for the cable. And I think it's a pretty good looking card with three large 100 millimeter fans with closed edges, uh, with some RGB on the front and on the side, and with a nice metal backplate, or at least half a backplate as the other half is open to let the air pass through. You get a GPU support bracket in the box, even though I'm not a fan of that design and I really do prefer something uh, that actually holds the card on the far end. But they also included some screw holes on that right side to use an external bracket instead. And while all of this sounds really great, it does come at a premium of about $75 or 80 euros compared to other models, which is a lot for a lower tier chip. Uh, there's no dual BIOS, which I would have expected given the price, 
but it will actually make sense when you see the performance numbers later on in this video. And on the back, there's uh, three display ports and one HDMI 2.1 port, so it is the same as on the Founders Edition and the Palette card. Now, in terms of size, the MSI is definitely the odd one out, and the other three are going to have an easier time fitting in smaller cases. But in a large case, having that larger card to look more impressive can be a positive thing. But the cards also differ in terms of weight. The Pallet Dual OC only weighs 610 grams, uh, followed by the Gigabyte Eagle with its 650 grams. The Founders Edition is a little bit over one kilo and the Gaming X Trio is even heavier. With a weight of 1156 grams, it is almost twice as heavy as the Pallet. Now, before we look at performance differences between all these cards, uh, let's do a quick recap of the 4060 Ti in general, in case you missed the video from yesterday. So in 30 games I tested on 1080p, uh, some on high and some on ultra settings, the 4060 Ti gets you 100 FPS or more in almost every game. There are a few exceptions that are either CPU bound or just extremely heavy, but you can use DLSS to keep those running nicely on a high refresh rate 1080p monitor as well. Now, generally speaking, you can also expect a 60 plus FPS experience on 1440p uh, with some of the heavier titles just behind that 60 FPS limit. But again, with a bit of help from DLSS, you can run them smoothly as well. Still, this is a 1080p card, and if you're serious about 1440p, the RTX 4070 is actually a lot faster and has more VRAM as well. It is more expensive, so if you only plan to game on 1080p, spending $200 more doesn't make much sense. But for 1440p gaming, I would personally try to go that route. If you find some older 3000 series cards for a good price, uh, don't write them off, uh, because compared to the 3060 Ti, the 4060 Ti is only about 12% faster on 1080p, but it uses significantly less power, has support for DLSS 3, and includes hardware encoding. So the 3060 Ti needs to be a lot cheaper for it to make sense. Similarly, the 3070 is about as fast on 1080p and a bit faster on 1440p, but again, without some of the newer features and while using more power. So I would not consider that one unless it is significantly cheaper as well. And today we also got some proper competition from AMD. Uh, they're also launching their new affordable $300 card today. And there wasn't really enough time to get a complete summary of the RX 7600 before filming this video, but my AMD video should go live at the same time, so do check it out as well. I will put the link in the description down below. Let's look at these four models and let's see how they compare to each other. In terms of boost speeds, uh, there's basically no real difference between them. Uh, there is a whole 2% of a difference between the highest and the lowest result, and about 1% of a difference between the three cards that will likely be in stock. And as always, none of the cards come with overclocked memory out of the box. In actual games, the clock speed differences lead to basically insignificant FPS differences. I mean, there is a single frame more here and a single frame more there, but in reality, you would never notice this while gaming. Still, the three custom cards are at least just above the baseline that is set by the Founders Edition. In terms of power consumption, the Founders Edition uses the least amount of power, followed by the Gigabyte Eagle, and both the Palette and MSI use a little bit more. Now, that's also not a huge difference in absolute numbers, but 8% is still worth pointing out, giving the similar levels of performance. Looking at noise, I guess it's no surprise that the MSI is the quietest by quite a margin, uh, also removing the need for a second quiet BIOS. Uh, to be fair, the Founders Edition feels very quiet as well, and even the Palette and the Gigabyte that run a little bit louder are not loud enough to actually bother anyone. But if it does bother you, the Eagle has the second BIOS you can swap to, making it just a bit quieter and putting it more in line with the Founders Edition from NVIDIA. If you look at the temperatures, it's usually the reverse, but this time around, the oversized MSI cooler manages to be the most quiet and the best cooled at the same time. And seeing these temperatures makes me wonder if they could have gone even quieter, to be honest. Uh, between the three MSRP cards, the Founders Edition is technically the most efficient one. 
it just beats the palette while it was also a bit quieter. And the Gigabyte is either roughly as cool with slightly more noise or running a bit warmer at a similar noise level. Between the Gigabyte and the Palette cards, the Gigabyte runs just a bit cooler at similar noise levels, but whether your GPU runs at 62 or 65 degrees really makes no real difference at all. To be fair though, uh, when you get to the point that you're nitpicking over a degree or two or a decibel or two, you have to remember that those are differences that you would never realistically notice in actual use. Uh, even with the cards side by side, it is really hard to tell the difference or at least the cheaper three ones. Because without a doubt, the MSI Gaming X Trio is objectively better. It runs the coolest, it is the quietest, and it has a nice metal backplate and some RGB if you're interested in that. But I also don't think it makes sense to spend $75 or 80 euros more on a 4060 Ti. At that point, you're getting super close to the MSRP of a 4070, which is a lot faster in every possible way, and it has more VRAM, and even an entry-level 4070 will be cool and quiet enough since it doesn't use that much power either. I mean, there might be some very rare use cases where you just want or just need a super silent card, but for a typical gaming rig, I don't think this card makes sense to buy unless you find it for a much smaller price premium in the future. Between the other three MSRP cards, the Founders Edition is very hard to beat, but I expect the Founders card to come in such small quantities that it will probably be out of stock uh, most of the time. So assuming the Gigabyte and the Palette will actually be available, I would say the Gigabyte comes out slightly ahead, uh, if only for the dual BIOS that gives you just a bit more flexibility. But if you prefer the black look of the Palette or you find the Founders Edition in stock, it's not like you're really going to be wrong with any of these, to be honest. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their RMX Shift power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are very unique as they come with connections on the side instead of the back, making it easier than ever to add and remove cables as well as cable manage your build. They are extremely reliable and power efficient and due to their low noise fans that stop completely under 50% load, they are also extremely quiet. You get a variety of cables for any system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power connection Connection, and on top of that, you get a nice 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. I hope this video was helpful enough. If you liked it and you want to make sure you never miss my future uploads, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.